The Caribbean boasts of some of the most diverse swamps in the world. Mangrove swamps, a major community of living, thriving organisms, line the hundreds of miles of twisting rivers and creeks along our coast. This is magnificent canoe country. Swamps are a type of wetland dominated by woody plants. There are two main classes of swamp, forested swamps and shrub swamps. Shrub swamps are the type of swamps found here in the Caribbean and feature mostly shrub vegetation such as dogwood and mangrove. They are found along slow-moving streams and along coastal areas in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Mangrove swamps are defined by salt-tolerant trees and shrubs which can tolerate the harsh conditions of the brackish waters and salty tidal waves. Here in the swamp, many people see the water as being dirty or smelly. The color in water here in the swamp is actually linked to a chemical called tannic acid that's in the leaves of the mangrove trees. So when these leaves fall off and they decompose, tannic acid is released and it colors the water brown. The smell associated with mangrove swamps is hydrogen sulfide gas. This is produced by the decomposing bacteria living in the oxygen for sediments in swamps. Hydrogen sulfide has a characteristic rotten egg smell. The hanging roots of the red mangrove act as a sediment track. It works basically like a sieve. Then we get sediments washed down like in heavy rain. Those become trapped in the mangrove roots and basically the sediment accumulates right there in that base. As more sediment accumulates, more trees fall off, sticking to the new sediment and the land slowly increases, the land area and the coastal environment slowly increases. Mangrove swamps are definitely a natural one of the Caribbean. Man the link between mangrove swamps, seagrass beds and coral reefs is so vital and precious to the entire marine ecosystem that without mangroves, the reefs would collapse, the, the seagrass beds would collapse, there would be no ocean life without mangrove swamps supplying nutrients and supplying nursery grounds for these marine organisms to, to grow up, to spend the vulnerable part of their young lives in a protected place like a swamp. It's a true natural wonder. It's a, a place, a safe habitat where migratory birds can land to escape the hunters. Mangrove trees dominate Caribbean wetlands because they can survive in both salt and fresh water. They develop in protected areas like bays, lagoons, or estuaries. Red mangrove, black mangrove, and white mangrove are the three types of mangroves typically found in the tropics. The red mangrove is easily recognized by its unique arching roots. Black mangroves, which grow more inland, have roots that project upward, supplying plants in submerged soils with air. Unlike the other two, White mangroves have no exceptional root structures. As the mangrove root system grows, it becomes more tangled, extensive, and close to impenetrable. It acts like a sieve, with bits of seaweed, dead organisms, leaves, practically anything that can be carried by water, collects and gets trapped. Flushed by the ebb and flow of the tide, Mangrove swamps are constantly refueled with nutrients carried by freshwater runoff from the land. This shifting world of mud and sand is home to a bursting population of creatures, some of them rare and endangered. The mangrove swamp is like a, a filter, preventing sedimentation on the coral reef. Then those nutrients are slowly released over many years to nourish sea grass beds, turtle grass beds and the coral reef itself. If all that sediment went on the coral reef in one dose, it would prevent sunlight from reaching the coral. The coral would die, you would just get algae on the reef, marine productivity would decline. The swamp, because it's the last large swamp, for example, when cattle egrets colonized the New World, Graham Hall Swamp was the first place they nested on Barbados in 1970. Subsequently, the little egret, another colonist from um, the Old World, first nested in Graham Hall Swamp in 1994, and this is the only documented location in the Western Hemisphere where little egrets are nesting. Even more recently, and emphasizing again the importance of the last large swamp, the first record for Anhinga on February 1st, 2005 was at Graham Hall Swamp again, again emphasizing the importance of the last large swamp on the island. Over 400 species of fish exist in this wetland. 
Fish make use of the swamp at certain stages in their life cycle, such as their spawning period. This high fish content results from seasonal flooding that links the flooded Rupununi savannas to the Amazon basin. Trinidad's Nauru River Swamp is home to dozens of animal species, including 150 bird species such as this endangered blue and gold macaw. The West Indian manatee, another endangered species, is one of the 59 mammals that inhabit Nauru River. This animal diversity results in intricate food webs and feeding relationships. The billions of worms, protozoa, oysters and other invertebrates function as food sources for fish and shrimp. These in turn feed birds, pelicans and alligators. Many of us think of swamps and wetlands as just dirty, creepy places with muddy waters crawling with snakes and of little or no importance. Nothing could be further from the truth. Mangroves with their dense network of roots help to expand and stabilize the coastline preventing erosion of the shoreline. This is perhaps the most important ecological function of mangrove swamps. The leaves of mangrove trees store the sun's energy as well as the nutrients in the silt carried by upland rivers. Mangroves grow and shed leaves all year round. The leaves that fall from these trees provide a food supply for marine life and other microorganisms. Thus, mangrove swamps act as important nursery and feeding areas for a wide variety of living organisms. Furthermore, mangrove swamps help improve water quality, regulate the global climate, and even protect coastal areas from hurricane damage by acting as wind buffers. Additionally, the swamps filter polluted or silted land runoff before it reaches the ocean and destroys the ecosystem. On the economical side, these swamps are a source of food through fishing, agriculture, and aquaculture. Even the leaves of mangroves produce a type of honey. Quite a number of people use the leaves of certain plants to make thatching for roofs, hats, and many other handicraft. Mangrove wood can be used to build boats, houses, and furniture. Ecotourism is one more valuable role of mangrove swamps promoting public awareness of the importance of these areas. Sadly though, despite an increasing awareness of their value and importance, mangrove swamps continue to be destroyed in many parts of the world, including the Caribbean, for economic and political reasons. In an effort to preserve the swamp and its fragile ecosystem, the Nariva wetlands was declared an environmentally sensitive area under the International Ramsar Treaty. The Ramsar Convention allows for the conservation and wise use of wetlands through national action and international support. Mangrove swamps. They are just as spectacular as any of our Caribbean natural wonders. The human mind can only begin to imagine the fascinating world that exists inside the twisted roots and lush vegetation of the mangrove swamp. We should make every effort to ensure that these wonders are around for future generations to marvel at.